If you're a neckbeard like me and you use your terminal all day long, you're gonna want it to look beautiful. I mean, you're staring at it all day, it might as well look good, right? So in this video, I wanna show you how to make the most amazing terminal setup for 2024. It's absolutely gorgeous and it comes packed with cool features. Check this out right now. We have a beautiful command line prompt powered by Starship, which is powered by Rust, by the way, which is blazing fast. And we also have amazing goodies like autocomplete in our terminal. We also have fuzzy finding our terminal history, which is unbelievable. And we have AI. We can type a question in the terminal and it'll give us an answer. Even if you're a terrible programmer like me, you can look like you know what you're doing because AI is gonna help you. So cool. This also comes with a lot more goodies. If I had friends, they would be super jealous right now. I wanna show you how to make this exact terminal setup for Mac OS or Linux. Let's get into it. For a while now, I've been wanting to recreate the 2023 Make Your Mac OS Terminal Look Amazing video, and I wanted to bring it to 2024, where we had a lot more tools and a lot more interesting things. So to start with, I did some research by watching my previous video, but when I opened my video, I noticed a comment, a comment by a guy named Javier Leba. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now Javier said, these are useless recommendations for rookies. Warp is far better than iTerm far, far better. And Starship is better than Oh My ZSH. Well, Javier, I just got one thing to say to you, pal. Thanks, partner. You see, this gave me a great idea. I want to update our terminal setup for 2024. And there's so many cool tools out there like Warp and Starship. So let's get started on a new terminal setup that looks beautiful and has amazing functionality. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is install Warp. Now you might be saying to yourself, hold on partner, Warp is only available on Mac OS. Well guess what? Not for long, because pretty soon it's going to be available on a Linux distribution near you. I got invited to the private beta for Linux because I'm a bit of a hotshot, and I can show you right now how it works. Check it out. Right here I have an Ubuntu install showing off Warp running on Linux. Now Warp is an amazing terminal. It comes with a lot of cool features like AI, auto completion, and all kinds of goodies. So coming soon, it's going to be available on Linux. And because it's going to be available on Linux, I'm pretty sure it's also going to be available on Windows using WSL. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's how it works. Either way, keep your eyes open because it's coming soon. But let's get back to Mac OS. Linux scares me. The way to install Warp in Mac OS is with Homebrew. So we can just type brew install warp. And it's as simple as that. Now, if we open up Warp, we see the terminal right in front of us. Amazing. So before we get into configuring this terminal to look amazing, let me just show you some of the awesome features that it has out of the box. Now, I do have a disclaimer here. Warp did sponsor this video. However, we were already gonna make this video with Warp anyways, thanks to our good friend Javier. He gave us a great idea. It just so happened that Warp reached out to us around the time we were recording this video anyway. So thank you Warp for supporting the channel. Anyways, let's show off some of the cool features. Now, typically when I'm updating a terminal or when I'm configuring it, I would install a tool like FZF or rip grep. That would allow me to fuzzy find my command history, but Warp has this installed by default. If I hit control R and start typing, it looks through my history of commands on this terminal and I'm fuzzy finding my commands by default. Amazing. So now we don't have to install FZF if we don't want to. The other thing I would install is Oh My ZSH and I would install some plugins for it like autocomplete, but Warp also has autocomplete out of the box. If I start typing, Warp is starting to autocomplete my commands based on the things I've typed before. Pretty awesome. And last but not least, this is one of the coolest parts. Warp has AI to help you with things that you might've forgotten. So for example, if I hit control tilde, I'm prompted to ask Warp AI. And if I have forgotten how to do something like, let's say, for loops in bash, I can just ask warps AI and it'll come back with completions. If I hit enter, I'm dropped into the terminal and I can autocomplete this suggestion. How awesome is this? Personally, I use this all the time for work because I'm always forgetting Kubernetes commands, but Warp has really great AI completion for Kubernetes commands. And so I look like I'm a much better developer than I actually am. So thanks. So Warp looks pretty good out of the box, but it doesn't look beautiful. And we want a beautiful terminal because we're good neck beards and we're hip and we want to look at something nice. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is change the theme. Now for 
Warp, it has a cool theme switcher. If you do Control Command T, you open up the theme switcher and you have a few different options here. But one theme that it doesn't come with that I love is Cat Poochine. I use Cat Poochine for everything. It's the cat's meow. Sorry about that pun, but seriously, it's perfect. Now, the great thing about Cat Poochine is that they have a spot in their repository specifically for installing Cat Poochine for Warp. Now, you can go down and browse through all these different flavors. My favorite is Mocha. It's just the best. And all you have to do is copy this command, which basically takes these files and puts them into a special directory that Warp recognizes. We go back to Warp, paste our command, and then all of these files are downloaded. Now, if you quit Warp and then reopen it, when you open your theme switcher, you'll notice all of your cappuccine flavors down here. I like mocha, so that's what I use. Now, I already had this installed on my system, but that's the way you would do it for your system from a fresh start. Okay, so now we have Warp, we have all of Warp's tooling, and we have a beautiful color scheme in cappuccine. Now, if you're someone who uses the terminal a lot and you're trying to make it look beautiful, you're gonna need a nerd font. There are just so many tools out there that use the glyphs in nerd fonts that you should really just install one just in case. So basically you would go to downloads and you would find the nerd font that you like. My favorite is hack, but I've already installed hack. So let me just install one randomly just to show you how it works, at least on Mac OS. You download the zip file, you unzip it, and then you go to that folder. And I like to just select all of the fonts and open them. And now this will open your font book on Mac OS and you can just click install it. It's all the different variations of this font that came in these TTF files. There's propo, mono, and nerd font. Now in Linux, I'm sure this is very different, but depending on your distribution, it's probably a similar process, but look it up based on your distribution. It's the same site and probably a similar way to do it. Anyways, when you have your nerd font installed, you want to go to the settings for warp, go down to appearance and scroll down to text. And this is where you would select your nerd font. Now for me, I told you I like hack. So I have hack already installed and I have that being used in my terminal. Cool. So now we have our terminal, we have a color scheme and we have this nerd font. What's next? Well, our command prompt looks like crap, but if you wanna be a cool neckbeard like me, you're gonna want a beautiful command prompt. And again, thanks to our friend Javier, we know of an amazing tool called Starship. So let's check that out. So Starship is a cross shell prompt. It's the minimal, blazing fast, and infinitely customizable prompt for any shell. Those are some big claims, but let's check it out. If we want to install Starship, we scroll down to the installation section, click on Mac OS, and oh look, it's available in Homebrew. Cool, brew, install Starship. Great, so now Starship is installed, but we wanna activate it for our shell. So let's go back to the site. We scroll down and we find step two, set up your shell to use Starship. Now the default Mac OS terminal, I believe is ZSH. I'm pretty sure that was changed recently. I could be wrong. If it's not ZSH, then it's bash. Either way, you're gonna to wanna to follow one of these to check our shell. If we wanna make sure we can just type echo dollar sign zero. We are using ZSH. And since we're using ZSH, we wanna scroll down and add this line to our ZSH RC file. So let's do that. So now we can scroll down to the bottom, add this eval line to our ZSH file, right and quit. And then we can source ZSH RC. This is the same procedure for bash, just with bash RC instead of ZSH RC. We source ZSH RC and Oh look, our terminal prompt changed. We are now using Starship, but it still doesn't look great. If we go to Starship, we can click on presets and these are all the presets that they have for Starship. Now my favorite is Groovebox Rainbow. So let's click on that. Now this is kind of cool. There's a pretty simple command that we can use, Starship preset Groovebox Rainbow, and it outputs it to a special file called starship.toml. Now a toml file is basically the Rust equivalent of a YAML file. So let's copy and paste this command. And now we have a beautiful Groovebox terminal. Unbelievable, our command prompt is looking sick, but it's not Capuchin. I made this command prompt with Capuchin colors. I'm gonna spare you the gory details, but essentially I opened up this toml file and I changed all of the colors to be part of the Capuchin palette. Now to save you some time, I uploaded this to a GitHub repo. I'll leave a link in the description below. But essentially, I can copy my Starship Toml file from git.files starship.toml to config starship.toml and that changes it to capuchin so that is how you get a beautiful shell on mac os and linux now you can be the talk of the town
all the other developers are gonna be super jealous of you. And if you liked our Vim setup, where I showed you a little sneak preview when I edited our ZSH file, check out our course on setting up NeoVim from scratch. But either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks, nerds.